Futures and options on futures trading involve substantial risk and is not a suitable investment for all types of investors. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future results. When I use the word I in this video, it refers to what I teach in my charting course or what I author in my twice daily oral and written updates. Prices shown on charts and quote boards are in real time and take into account all known activity up to this point in time. And if you'd like to read more of this disclaimer, simply hit the pause key on your video player. Good day, all. Ira Epstein of Linden Associates with your financial market wrap-up. And this is for the end of a trading month. Yeah, this is May 31st, 2017. The time right now, about 3.15 p.m. Central Daylight Time. So basically, you're looking at the settlement prices of the markets. You again see that the VIX, a volatile trading day. And one more time, it couldn't stay over that 1100 area. And as much as they broke the stock indices, by late in the day, this market started reversing course. Now, intraday, the market was down, and part of it has to do with the fact that James Comey is going to be testifying between, the, I think, before the Senate Intelligence Committee next Thursday. Rumors are he's going to say that he was pressured by President Trump to uh, not pursue Mike Flynn. Who knows what's true? It's going to be his word versus the president's word. I don't know where this all goes. The president, in the meantime, is referring any questions going forward about Russia, according to Sean Spicer, to the president's attorney for further questioning. In other words, the president's going to distance himself. I wish he would stop the tweeting also, which was going on last night. But if you look at the gold market versus the silver, you're seeing uh, the gold gain on it there. Copper up today as we saw better numbers, PMI numbers, out of China, they look very, very, uh, still 10 months of growth, so you can't a answer more than that. Platinum was up, and you'll see the palladium up. And one more time, look at the bonds in the notes. They keep going up, even though the Fed is, from the looks of everything, going to raise interest rates come June. But the question comes after that, what goes on? Because the economic data that's coming out hasn't been stellar. The, if you will, in the room, the gorilla that we're going to have is Friday's uh, on a, a jobless data. That number is going to be the key to this uh, June hike. If the numbers came out terrible, I don't know what happens to the June hike. If the numbers come out as expected, that we see 180,000 new jobs, they probably go ahead and raise the rate. Why not put some bullets in the chamber in case at some point we start getting corrections in these economies of the world and they slip back? The big problem, if you saw the Fed beige book today, was no inflation. They're not seeing that price inflation, and that's cause for concern to them. As you take a look here, you can see that the weekly bar chart has still got this surge from there right on up to 24.17.75, and look where the market hit today. So for the month, for the weekly charts, they're going to all end up in pretty good shape here as things are looking up. Now, I can't answer the week. I, I can certainly answer the monthly charts are going to look good. We still have to go a couple more days for the week. When we take a look at the E-mini daily area chart of closes, still powerful. And as you can see, this market just is resilient as can be. It refuses to break. When we take a look at the action today, we're going to see that the swing line is still very much in place with lower highs. Today's high did not take out yesterday's and lower lows. So the trend is down. So let's assume, because we're so resilient, that the market goes up and takes out the 2417 level. The pattern on the chart will continue to be one of a lower low and a higher high then. We had that whole thing happen in some of these areas, as you know. So it's not an easy market to get involved in is the point that I'm making. The market is staying over the 18-day moving average of closes, which is over the 100-day. So you have a bullish setup in moving averages. You've got the swing line down. Even if it goes higher than yesterday, it cannot turn up. And in the Bollinger Bands, big-time resistance back at 24, 24, 50. And we'll see if the market can get up there or if it was window dressing today. Now, what's window dressing? As you come to the end of a month, sometimes people want to window dress how their portfolios look for the month. And there's a lot of buying and selling, and it's called the window dressing. And that's what they've done. They may have kicked this market up, so it just looks phenomenal there. You come in tomorrow, and you may have a whole different set of circumstances looking at you. 
When we look at slow stochastics, this is a momentum indicator. And what I love about it, it can be neutral, it can be overbought, oversold, and it can convert an overbought condition into a very bullish condition or an oversold into a very bearish condition, which never has happened. We just don't get the bearish embedded readings. We get the bullish ones. And you need three days in a row where both the K and the D lines, which the K is the red, the blue is the D, where they close over 80. So you're going to have that today. You had it yesterday. And on Friday, you also had it. So you have an embedded reading. Until the red line closes back under 80, I look for this market to be very well supported. The dilemma is the market has stayed in a tight band in the Bollinger Bands. Take a look at this. It definitely has a, a bent to the upside, but it's not doing what it did back at a zone like this where the market was soaring. The market has, for the moment at least, and maybe for going into the summer, as I said on Fox today, maybe. The market's going to take a break as traders now get ready for their summer. Their kids get out of school. Uh, we know that Congress goes on vacation shortly in Illinois. Our budget runs out tonight. We're the most broke state, the most mismanaged state by far in the whole union. It's, it's unbelievable. In the NASDAQ, the market again up to a new all-time high, embedded reading, riding the, lower, the upper Bollinger Band powerhouse. The Dow, not as strong, but what about embedding? Well, both numbers over there over 80, over here over 80, but not so. Uh, well, yes, they were on Friday. I, I read that wrong. So you have your fully embedded reading on this one as well. This is power. What you don't have is the Russell, which has been the weak part of the market, joining that parade. But what did the Russell finally do today? This was the Russell yesterday. And if it's going to break down, Possibly, it goes to the lower Bollinger Band to find its support. Went right there, turned around, it's going to finish the day closing higher. That might have been it for the short term. The market has still got momentum that is flat to pointing down. Resistance levels come in between 13.75 and 79.30. If you get over 13.82, you will then have a pattern of a higher high and a lower low. In other words, no trend one more time. The sellers have shown themselves in this market. The buyers have shown themselves in the NASDAQ. In the VIX, the market's had a pattern of higher lows, higher highs. Today's low did not take out yesterday's low, so you still are okay there. But guess what's starting to happen? You're building this bearish embedded reading. And if it can do so, day one, two, and three. It's masking its weakness by trying to come up to the 18-day average. If it stays like this, I'm looking for the market to get through this level and then maybe make a challenge to lower prices. Can it get to the lower Bollinger Band? That hasn't been easy. As you can see, the market's gotten there, but that was way back in March. And since then, it really barely skirts that bottom to get down. And that's because the market is still overwhelmingly friendly. However... As we get closer now to real testimony by XFBI Director Comey, that could shake things up all over the place. September T-bonds, here too, we're getting bullishness. Day one, two, on Friday it didn't have it. Tomorrow's going to be a key day in this market. If it extends, it embeds, then I'm looking for the upper Bollinger Band to be hit. In the 10-year notes, overbought, in an uptrend, Resistance back at the 126.20 area. If you take out right here the 125.20 zone, market probably slips back into just a trading affair. Dollar index today, let's loose to the downside, and why not? Take a look at what real interest rates are doing. The stock market's still looking okay. If you look at Europe, they have growth like we do, maybe even a little better right now. They have the same problem with employment inflation, however problem for them. You have a higher high, lower low pattern. Maybe this market makes a run to the lower Bollinger Band. In the euro currency, you're coming up and finishing near the highs of the day. And look at this. Today, even with this high, the ra past rally high here was, watch this, 112.62 and a half. Now watch today's high. 
112, 62 and a half. Are we going to see a, a double top or is the market going to be able to extend through that, maybe capture some stops from the shorts up here and carry into the 113.60 area? Don't know, but that, that's a possibility. If you come to the British pound, today a huge outside day. At first the market got hit hard because yesterday we saw polls come out where it showed that the conservatives are losing, well actually the conservatives are gaining on the Tories, let me say it the right way. Then today the Tories, which is I believe Miss May's party, doing better. It, it's pretty crazy what's going on. Again, who wins? Is it going to be uh, Miss May ends up with not the majority that she had even going into this? A lot of people didn't want her to call the snap election. It'd be a real shame if she loses that because that might be the end of her being prime minister. They need somebody very strong with a big mandate. When I say strong, not that she's not a strong lady. Strong in the sense they need parliament to really give her power or whoever the prime minister is to negotiate. You don't want to go in weak. And what the, Mr. Corbyn wants to do is have a soft Brexit as Ms. May basically wants a hard Brexit. As you take a look at the yen, the yen still staying strong, overbought, not trending. You got lower highs, higher, you got a higher high and a lower low. I wish I could say that right. I'm also watching. You might be getting ready to get a flip-flop here and get this market to turn back into a bullish crossover where the 18-day average gets over the 100. In the crude oil market, we've seen a nice sell-off now ever since OPEC decided to extend. Market was disappointed that they didn't deepen the cuts. You see that pain here. Will there be any follow-through? I've I got my doubts. I, I really have a hard time seeing that. But the trend is down until you take out 5028. Should it extend? Momentum pointing down, trend down, bias. 4,600 is still very much a target. So whatever I think doesn't really matter. It's what the chart's showing. Gasoline making a stand against the 18-day average of closes as prices drip down. If you can see this market start back up or if the API numbers come out strong and they're due out just momentarily at uh, 3.30, so we'll see what this market does. Actually, we probably are seeing the impact of them in the crude right here now. Uh, and I, I, I don't have the numbers for you, but the fact that it's not crashing means to me that the numbers weren't stellar because you'd be getting crude going back up one way or the other, and they're not crashing. So the net probably uh, is traders just scratching their head what's going on in stockpiles. And in the nat gas market and summing this up until you get really hot weather, where are you going? I want to talk to you one more time about my charting course. I know a lot of you watch. I mean, we, we see the hits go up and up and up uh, on our accounts, and people tell people about us, and I think that's great. However, one of the keys that we want to do is remind you that I teach in a very interesting way. 54 chapters of videos. And if you take the chapters, all of them together, I think it works out to be about four or five hours of videos. And it's not a race to get through it. You see what I do, you do the same thing. Then in the mornings, I bring you into a video that looks like this and I review for you each morning the different five indicators taught in the charting course. You're going to learn swing lines, moving averages, slow stochastic studies, Bollinger Bands, and of course window envelopes. I don't know if I said that. So you get all those put together and when I say moving averages I'm talking different ones. When I'm talking this, the different ways to look at a chart. I go inside days, outside days, some chart patterns, what I think. And I think I've taken slow stochastics to a level you've never seen before. So if that's interesting to you, $99.95, it also includes our charting software, $99 value, access to my research for 30 days, $60 value, the whole course, $99.95. All you need to do is go to our website under the word education. You'll see Iris Charting Course. There'll be a fax page about it there, so it explains how everything works. Where you go. No mailing, no shipping charges, everything is online. How do you view it? Well, you can click up here. If you're watching me on YouTube, it'll take you right to the page. On our uh, website, I've explained where it's at. You can call my staff to work with it as well. If you're interested in any other offers we have, just simply look underneath us on some of the websites. It'll say, click here for Iris Free Offers. Take advantage of that. I'm long today, but there was a lot to talk about. You have a good day.